Warrior Warriors, it is me, Susie Pettit, and I have a guest on the show today, my friend and colleague, Elizabeth Cush. She goes by Biz Cush. So Biz is a licensed clinical professional counselor. She's a woman's life coach and, and a business owner in Annapolis, Maryland. She's also the host of Awaken Your Wise Woman podcast. As a coach, she helps midlife women who feel overwhelmed and unfulfilled embrace and embody their inner wise woman so that they can fully enjoy the beautiful life they've created. Sounds like she's helping women live lives they love. So I loved having her on the show today. We dove into parts work or the internal family systems, which is something that I use in my coaching and that fascinates me as a coach and helps me also individually. So I'm thrilled to bring this body of knowledge to you if you're not familiar with it yet or to dive a bit deeper if you are. Let's go. And welcome, Biz, to the Love Your Life Show. Thanks for coming on today. Oh, Susie, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate, yeah, just this connection, and I'm excited to talk to you today. Great. Well, I I briefly was talking to you before we started that I have been listening to your podcast for a very long time, and so it is just a wonderful full circle moment to bring you on to share your expertise with the Love Your Life show listeners and um, all around the world. So I am thrilled to have you in on. And if no one has heard of you before, could you give mm -hmm. us just a brief summary of how you got to be doing what you're doing? Yeah, well, uh, I am a therapist, a life coach for highly sensitive women and uh I am a podcaster like you, as you said, uh, I host the Awaken Your Wise Woman podcast, which used to be called the Woman Warriors podcast. And um, I'm a late bloomer. So I went back to grad school when I was 50, I think is when I started to, you know, I knew at that time my kids were older and I really wanted to, psychology had just kind of grabbed me when I was trying to raise my children in a, in a mentally healthy way. So mm -hmm. for them and for me, uh, and really knew that I wanted to be a therapist, but with my own children in their own journeys with education and the costs, it took a while for me to actually, um, complete my master's, but did it and then jumped into therapy and now I'm doing life coaching too. Yeah, I love that part of your story that you were, you know, 50 and beyond as it, it's just, it doesn't matter. Like we need to get over our thoughts about what's possible for us. And it's so true. Yeah. It's so true. Cause I think we can get so stuck in the, I'm too old or I can't, you know, it's too late for me, but, um, you know, obviously I was fortunate enough that, you know, the financial piece wasn't that hard, you know, it was a challenge, but it wasn't, it, it wasn't it didn't get in the way of me mm. going ahead with, with, with getting my education and becoming a therapist. So yeah, which yeah. is lovely. So I, I think this is a great segue. One of the things I wanted you to talk to us about today is internal family systems and sort of parts work is I think how some of us know of it. And I know for me, when I am going, you know, thinking of a new goal or, you know, no matter my age and right now I'm 51, but if I'm thinking of doing something new, I have these different, I call them voices in my head <laughs> that yes. come up and have different opinions <laughs> on my goals. And so sure, sure. I would love if you could tell us a little about like what even is internal family systems. Yeah. So uh, internal family systems was developed, created, whatever came about from um, uh, the founder's name is uh, Dick Schwartz. And he was working with clients, I think that had uh, eating disorders. I'm pretty sure. And, and realized that, that within their struggles, there were parts of them that would actually uh, encourage them to binge eat or to withhold food. And, and, and so because he came from a very family systems orientation of therapy, he started working with those parts of people, like as if almost like they're, they were the clients, those parts that were wounded, but, um, 
I uh, have been trained just in the level one. It's it's very hard to get into the trainings for IFS, but I've also done a lot of consultation and sort of side trainings to kind of keep up and my own therapy, uh, personal therapy. Uh, my therapist is an IFS therapist too. So really doing a lot of my own work with the parts. Mm -hmm. So the idea is we all have different parts of us and the parts all have good intentions. It's just sometimes those intentions have gone astray, right? So say, mm, and oftentimes the reason they go astray or because they, or, or they get overly activated, it's because there's a wound behind that part, right? So like a, we talk about inner child work and really working with those wounded parts can help heal our whole system. Mm. And the idea is that they all have good intentions, even if sometimes it doesn't feel like that. Like sometimes our inner critic can be pretty mean and terrible to us, or if we struggle with an eating disorder or, or if there are parts of us that use substances, it's harder to see the good intention there. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that through developing our self-energy, that we all have self-energy, through developing that self-energy, we can learn to relate to these parts, all of them with compassion and kindness and curiosity versus like, I know for a long time, my inner critical part, I would just be like, oh, I just wish it would just shut up, right? Just go away mm. versus like, hmm, what if I listened to it? What if mm -hmm. I got to know it? What if I could better understand what its intentions were and what drives it so that then I could heal what was happening underneath that? Mm -hmm. Because um, does that make sense? It absolutely makes sense. And, and that is, I yeah. parts work has been really helpful for me. And interestingly, you know, the way that I coach, I'm constantly trying to help clients see like the difference between just reality, like, like facts, sort of like the sun is rising and our thoughts, like it's a, you know, miserable day because I have to be in the office all day and I can't be outside with the sun and just sort of separating out from that and the the freedom that comes from that. And I have found that same freedom with with parts work and recognizing that maybe I do have a goal and maybe, you know, there's a voice in my head and and in the IFS system, it's it's a part that is trying to keep me safe, that is saying, no, Susie, you can't do that. Like that's not possible for you. Or you know, exactly. and it's, yeah, it's like throwing these grenades in my back. <laughs> and, and what I like about your work is how you bring self-compassion into it. Um, yeah, yeah. Because I do find that when I can see that with the parts work and I can see like, oh, okay, that's the little me who had a dad who told her women aren't good at business. And so this part is trying to protect me because it truly believes women aren't good at business. Yes. And so, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and I think like when we can bring that sort of, uh, more compassionate side of us in, but mm -hmm. also recognize like, this is just a part, right? Like we have lots of parts, but this isn't all of me. Like mm -hmm. we talked earlier, like, uh, I used to say, I'm an anxious woman. And now I say, I have an anxious part that sometimes mm -hmm. gets activated. You know, I've done a lot of work around managing my anxiety and trying to help me better understand what drives it, but I still have it. That part is still there and it will still show up. And it takes sometimes some extra uh, compassion on my part to not just be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm still dealing with this yeah. anxiety, right? Yeah. Yeah. Someone, and maybe it was in his book um, that I have right here under my computer, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, or it was an interview I heard where they, they talked about it sort of like a boardroom table and how you have all these parts sitting around the table. So you might have the anxious part and you might have the scared inner child, you know, you have all these parts and they all can have a say, but they're not the head of the table. And, and that, that helps yeah. me when I'm in it. Um, yeah. To just yeah. to be calmer about it. like so the anxious part comes up and I'm not like oh she's here like the day is ruined it's like oh I hear you it's yeah. all right um yeah so how yeah. do you work with parts work and with anxiety like how does 
how do you see that in your office or how do you help people with that? Yeah, well, I think that a lot of, um, for me, what I have come to recognize with clients and with myself too, because I am, an, I do have anxiety, I do have an anxious part, um, is that oftentimes anxiety is driven by how we've managed these parts in the past. So by um, pushing them away, telling them to be quiet. I know a lot of my clients are very good at sort of compartmentalizing difficult stuff. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's all in a box back here, but those boxes want to break open, right? <laughs> those parts want to be heard and seen. And that can feel really scary because there's probably almost all the time, other parts saying, oh, no, 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 that needs to stay in the box. Mm -hmm. That has to, that's not, we safe. can't, that's, it's too scary, right? Yeah. We don't know what'll happen if we open up that, that box or that, whatever, that portal that, you know, if we look too closely. And so the anxiety is driven by almost these contradictory, like the part, the younger wounded part wanting to be heard and the other part saying, shut it down, shut mm -hmm. it down. Mm -hmm. And so that creates sort of the um, like polarization within yeah. us of, of like, how do we handle this? So it is just slowing the process down and really better understanding <clears throat> what's kind of happening underneath it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess one of the terms I often, that also comes up with parts work is, is the protector. And that helps me certainly with anxiety when I'm noticing like anxiety is present and I can just like, I'm not anxious about my anxiety. Like I'm, it's like, oh, okay. Anxiety is here. It's here to protect me. It is, you know, I can, I can say I've got this now. Like you can stand down. This is normal yeah. fear as I'm taking a growth step forward. Um, yes. yes. Self-compassionate, kind voice. Um, well, and especially if there's trauma involved, right? Like to, to be able to, because oftentimes the parts that are wounded are behaving as if the trauma is happening right now because they don't know they, they haven't healed. They think we're still whatever age we might've been when the trauma happened. And so a lot of that sort of mindfulness piece of like, Oh, I'm here. I'm in my life. I'm safe. As far as I know, you know, I'm safe yeah. in this moment and that's not happening right now. And Two, I can come back to you and help you heal at some point when I'm feeling like I have the space to do that. Mm, very nice. Yeah. How uh, do you either use parts work or how do you just address sort of the inner critic in your practice or? Yeah. Well, again, like you said, it's a very protective part, right? Mm -hmm. So it's driven by typically like we, it doesn't want us to get hurt. So uh, in your example, like, uh, you know, if, well, I, and I can use my own example, but like, if you did have a father that said women can't be, aren't good at business and should never even try. And, you know, if you do, you're going to fail. Well, of course, a part of you is going to think like, oh my gosh, if I really do try this and I fail, what is that going to feel like? Mm -hmm. So you better not stay mm -hmm. away. You don't know what you're doing. You'll never figure it out. Whatever it is your inner critic says, but by like I said, just really sort of, you can really almost have a conversation with that part yeah. to say like, yeah. all right, what is the fear if I do? Because oftentimes these protective parts have like a job and their job is to keep whatever that is, you know, to keep you from getting hurt because you're going to try something new or to feel what it felt like when your dad said, don't do that. Like mm -hmm. you can't win, you can't mm -hmm. succeed. Um, you know, so many of what those protectors are protecting is not getting wounded again, the way you did mm -hmm. from that original wound. For yeah. sure. And so, so for my, and I'm fine using my particular circumstance, which is, which is that case. My dad consistently said, women are not good in business. Women shouldn't be in business women don't know what yeah. they're doing in business, like at least once a week. So that was like heavy programming for me yeah. growing up. And so now that I'm in business, I will hear that part of me when I'm trying to, you know, move to a next level. 
sort of push yeah. up and and that you know be that inner critical like oh you can't do this like you know and yeah. it it even can be in my father's voice so I just want to share that with listeners because the more aware we can get of it the more the sort of compassion and space we have to manage the part yes. what I would love to talk to is I think they're called um firefighters or like mm. so say I don't have that space that the inner critic is coming up like what are I've heard of firefighters or maybe I'm just totally botching that with parts work. What? No, what no, is, no. You're absolutely that right. show yep. up in this situation. Yeah. So the firefighters are like basically like extreme protectors, right? They get called in or jump in when they like basically a fire alarm is going off. They're like, holy crap. <laughs> this, the pain is coming. I can see it. Like the critic didn't work. The inner critic didn't stop her, didn't stop you from going forward with this plan. And she's not prepared. She can't do it. She might get hurt. And so they are extreme in that they will do whatever they can to stop you from feeling that pain, right? Mm -hmm. Stop you from rewounding that wound. And it can be, they can be, um, for a lot, for, well, it can be substance use, right? Because that numbs, you mm -hmm. know, so drinking too much or smoking too much or whatever your drug of choice is. It could be eating. It could be totally just disengaging. Like you get to a place where you just want to crawl in your bed and pull the covers over your head because it just all feels so overwhelming. This part says it's time to shut it all down. We can't like, we can't do anything else other than scroll our phone or yeah. sit in the corner or binge a television show you've seen 20 times before, mm -hmm. right? Because the, its job is to numb, right? It, the firefighter's job are, is basically to, to cut you off from how painful it could be. Mm -hmm. or I guess the it's going to be firefighter is more like a behavior almost it sounds like a part that comes up with the behavior like like so say I'm taking a step in my business and I'm you know not listening to the inner critic then the firefighter suddenly is like procrastination or over eating or over drinking or over shopping or like the overs that don't help us or the um yeah or the other yeah. side of the napping or the screw it not that you know and I just don't take mm. any steps forward but yeah yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, it's like you, you think about, um, um, like uh, literally like a fire, right. It's like the, the firefighters come in and want to burn it all down, you yeah. know, I mean, even though like, it's like a fire alarm going off inside you. It's also just like, let's just torch yeah. this to the ground. So you don't have to feel whatever it is you're feeling. Yeah. I, and I'm trying, I'm thinking of another example that maybe some of the listeners would resonate with. Like, so I have a lot of parents on here who have anxious children. And so if their yeah. child comes home from school and says something like, you know, Louise wouldn't sit with me at lunch today. And, and, and so the parent has a part that is very nervous and feeling like they wouldn't step in and control and, and they don't slow that down. I think the firefighter there would be like, oh, Blow Louise's mom, like it's like the over functioning, like the over absolutely. It can be yeah. anger, right? It can, <laughs> it can also be rage, right? Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, you know, yeah, right. Yeah. Like and, and big, right? I like that sort of the firefighter, like I guess I obviously that's where they get their term, but this, like, oh no, this can't go down, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and I think what is lovely about the model again, of, of internal family system or parts work is that even that firefighter's job, or, you know, even though as extreme as they can be, their intentions are good. Like mm -hmm. they want to protect you. They are the extreme protectors. Mm -hmm. And I think that can be a really hard piece for, it, it's not how we look at mental illness. It is not how we look at, cause it could be depression, right? It could be suicidal thoughts. It could be very extreme substance use to the extreme. So our sort of societal message around these protectors is get rid of them. Mm, yeah. You know, um, they need to stop versus well, even shame, right? Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Cause if a firefighter comes in and 
Like say, instead of doing my, whatever I'm going to do for my business, I decide to drink all night, you know, and, and the next morning, the voice that is programmed in my head would be shame instead of like, oh, Susie, let's look at why that protector came in. Exactly. Right? Yes, that's a hundred percent right. Yep. We learned we're yelling at our kids. I mean, it's, yeah. And then we don't change when we're shaming, but it's that like, oh my God, I yelled or, oh my God, I called the mom again and overparented and yes, yeah, yes, yes. Yes. So, um, yeah. So I, I just think it, it is a, it's a big leap because it's so different from how we typically look at those firefighter parts and, and then, and also I think mental illness too, where we sort of label a person as like, you are anxiety, you mm. have depression, you are a person that this is part of who you are versus like, ah, there's just a part of you that yeah, just need some healing and love and compassion. And it, it's not about, I mean, I think the other side of it is sometimes people are like, well, I'm not going to give myself a pass for all these things that I've done. Yes. And it's not that it's not that we're not saying it doesn't matter that your firefighters jump in. It's like, let's better understand mm -hmm. why they do what they do. So we can heal what happened, whatever it was that activated them to mm -hmm. go to this extreme because typically there's a pretty deeply held wound that's behind it for sure for sure and you had said earlier like mindfulness and and you know mindfulness is a word I'm not even really sure we pay much attention to but it really is bringing it to front of mind bringing it into consciousness and we can't change what we yes. don't see and one way not to see things is with shame because we shame just keeps things secret so if we just Oh, you know, yes. the next moment after we scream at our kids or after we over parent or after we over drink or after we overeat or after whatever over shop, whatever we do, if we mm -hmm. go to that extreme mean voice, we're not able to learn that lesson. And, and I, I think that's really where I've come in midlife is, is speaking to that part where you're like, people think they won't change anything. I have had enough life experiences now where I'm like, no, that's how I change things. Like in bringing in that softer, more compassionate, I guess in parts work would be called the big S, like the the big self, like the one yeah, big yeah, Susie yeah. who was like, hey, honey, yeah. I know you did that. That's probably not your best move, but let's look at why. <laughs> like, let's just right. like a hug to oneself. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. And, and one way to sort of identify where you are, like, am I in self or is this a different part, right? Like, is mm -hmm. you're, you're compassionate, you're caring, you're, you, you have a lot of curiosity versus mm -hmm. judgment. Mm -hmm. I think creativity comes into it. So there, there are six C's, which I'm mm -hmm. not remembering all of them, but uh, care, compassion, creativity, curiosity, Hmm. say kindness, even though that's okay, but yeah, right. there's two more, which I'm not remembering. Yeah. But yeah. So that we're, we are coming from that grounded, uh, softer place. Okay. That's really like, to me, like your core, your soul, your heart. Mm. Yeah. 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 I love that. Yeah. Uh, well, I, yeah. And, and I guess, so, so you're saying those C's when we're doing one of those C's that sort of shows us that we're using the big self, not another. Yeah. 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 Well, it, and, and if you're typically, as you said, when, when, if shame is popping up, that is another protective part to say that, like, you better shut this down. You can't let this part do this again. Like you, you should feel horrible about what you did versus like, Oh, let's bring some compassion. Let's understand this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, it. and, and it's not judgment around wherever you are, right? Like, because sometimes it's hard to access ourselves if we're really activated, it can be mm -hmm. really challenging. It's not oh, what sure. we're used to doing. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess one of the C's you mentioned was curiosity, which I, I feel like judgment and curiosity or the, the opposite side. Like, I, I'm like, are you the judge in the courtroom or the detective? Like be the detective. Cause the judge is yeah. just going to be like, you're wrong. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. right. Shame on you. Right. Shame on you. And then we don't go anywhere and it's like, all right, so I'm wrong, but what do I do with that? Right. <laughs> Not right. so great. Where do I go there? Yeah. So yeah. if listeners are interested in learning more about parts work or learning, like, what would you, how would you direct them to start or give any, yeah. Any 
Oh, well, there's a, uh, uh, the book I like, uh, it's a, a little tiny book. I wish I had it right here in my hand, but, uh, it's called introduction to internal family systems. It's mm -hmm. not very long. It's by Richard Schwartz and it is just a nice, succinct, um, sort of summary of parts work. Okay. You can go to the IFS Institute that has all the books and trainings and videos and things there that, you know, are for sale, but also I think they have some free content there too. Mm -hmm. And I know I have not read it, so I can't speak to it, but I've colleagues who've read it that, uh, Dick Schwartz's recent book, uh, no bad parts mm -hmm. is also a good resource. That's too. the one I have that I like. Um, and I guess if yeah. listeners, you know, they don't want to like go get more information, but they're like, no, 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 I'm ready to start today because I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking like just even journaling or, or just getting their thoughts out of their head and seeing maybe like, which part is this speaking yeah. or who does, yeah. sometimes I like looking at my thoughts and I'm like, who does this remind me of? Like clear, like my dad's message was so repeated and succinct over so many years that it's easy for me to be like, oh, that's my yes. dad. Like that. But then there are other voices that maybe are like, I don't even know. You can't put makeup on right. And I'm like, oh, that was like Cammy from like seventh grade. Like, do I still mm. want that? You know, um, yes. maybe just getting it out of their head, looking yeah. at their parts. Um, sure. Journaling can help. Uh, they talk about mapping your parts so you can use artwork like creativity to oh. see like what parts. And it doesn't even have to, you don't, it, it could just be color and shape like this part. Like for me personally, I don't have very clear, like, I don't have like, oh, this is a seven-year-old girl that, mm. and I can probably figure that out. But, but like, oftentimes my parts are more about a feeling, like a physical feeling mm -hmm. that I have in my body. Mm -hmm. And so slowing things down and like sort of either putting my hand on where I'm feeling it or just focusing my energy on where I feel that part in my body mm. just opens up uh, just space to hear it, to listen. Um, mm. Well, it's all those, things, yeah. the curiosity, yeah. the passion that, yeah. Oh, I love that. I had yeah. mapping your parts. I love that idea. So just sort of yeah. like getting yeah. some clarity. Cause what I find listeners is that when I have some clarity, I, I can be more curious and compassionate. Like I have another part of me, I, I label her Mrs. Fenton and I'm, I don't think Mrs. Fenton is listening to this podcast, but she, she was my English teacher and she was so critical of my writing. And sometimes when I'm writing my blog posts or writing, you know, notes for a podcast, Mrs. the part of Mrs. Fenton will be in my head. And, and it's helpful for me to just sort of recognize that, that that is not, you know, the big S Susie, that is yeah. Mrs. Fenton here. And she's here to be a protector to make sure that I don't put out crap quality. To my... Exactly. <laughs> she's your, your quality control. Right. Yeah. She's yeah. My quality control. Thank you, Mrs. Fenton. You <laughs> step down. Like <laughs> we don't need to be at the table today, but the, um, I like the idea of mapping them out. I'm, I can be a sort of visual person. And so, you know, again, what I'm hearing from you and what my listeners know for me, like there is no right way to do that. You could do it with colors. You can do it with feelings, or you can be like, this is my, you know, yeah. for me, Mrs. Fenton was fourth grade. So fourth grade. Oh. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It can be, yeah. Whatever works for you. Like it's really, a, um, you know, uh, in my own personal therapy work, which is because I'm a trauma survivor, it's very trauma focused. Like we're, we are staying with that wounded part once we find it mm -hmm. until it's fully healed and releasing. Mm -hmm. So what can happen is really beautiful. It's like, because these wounded parts carry these burdens, mm -hmm. I am worthless. I am unlovable you know, some of these very core beliefs and they carry these. And when we can release those burdens, that part then shifts the job it does, right? That part then, then can change how it feels in your system. It's lighter. Mm -hmm. It's, um, yeah, I had a very lonely part that has sort of become almost like a this may sound sort of weird, but like a spiritual guide for my other parts, like it's there watching and there and present in the healing of other parts. And it's really just such a, 
not something I would have expected, but it's a really mm-hmm. beautiful process. I love that. Yeah. So allow it's like the, the part sort of grows up and yes. Wounded yes. And is wounded. Yeah. How oh, wonderful. Yeah. Oh, thank yeah. you. Liz. Thank you for coming on today and where oh, should I direct sure. listeners because they will want more biz. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can find me through uh, either my therapy site, but I'm only licensed in a couple of states in the United States, but that's progressioncounseling.com or elizabethcushcoaching.com. And parts work can be brought into coaching too. You know, we may not be doing the heavy lifting of trauma work, but we can definitely work with parts there too. So, but I'm on Instagram. I am on, that's my podcast, Awaken Your Wise Woman. And I'm on LinkedIn. So okay, I will put all, all those way. links in the show notes and definitely want to, as I started the show saying, I started listening to business podcast a while ago. And so I definitely want to highlight that um, under what she just said, her podcast is outstanding and um, has lots of great resources in there. So thank you for coming on today, Viz. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much, Susie. This has been great.